Hey, welcome in. Welcome back to the Elvis Workshop. Thank you very much for checking out my channel. I do appreciate it. Um, in my last video, I talked about the book Hurry Home Elvis, which has been recently reprinted. And I thought it deserved a little bit more attention, but I wanted to do a video that kind of brought out a little bit more in some of the other books that are similar to it. So I want to talk about Graceland today, but I don't want to talk about the mansion itself. I want to talk about the everyday running of the mansion during Elvis's lifetime. So I have three topics I want to talk about very briefly is the um, Hurry Home Elvis, which is a fan's perspective from outside the gates for the most part. The Graceland Gates, which is Harold Lloyd's book, who was security for Graceland, so inside the gate. And then Inside Graceland, that's the title of the book as well, um, by Nancy Rooks, who was uh, a, a maid for Elvis um, at Graceland for several years. And um, so I wanted to show a couple of other books just to, just to kind of highlight them, but I want to talk about these three specifically. When you go to Graceland, you can buy a tour book. It's been changed over the years, and I have several of them here. I don't believe this is one of them. I think this is just Elvis at Graceland, a book. Somebody could maybe tell me a little bit more about that. But these are uh, tour books here that you could buy at the gift shop. And they've changed them over the years. Anytime there's a new edition or maybe a new display or something like that, they have added to these books. Here's another one. This one was a longtime favorite. Good stuff in there. This, I believe, to be their current book that you can purchase at the gift shops. Then, of course, there's this hardcover book, the big giant one here. That was not a tour book. This is just a book about Graceland Mansion. Now, over there on the side, I'm just going to leave it there, but you can see most of it over there. That's my boxcar of Joseph Perzada. That's called Elvis Presley's Graceland Through the Years, 1957 and 1977. That's a great book. It's a hardcover and a slip case. Excellent book. Hard to get now. Um, this one here is actually from Elvis's day. Jeannie LeMay, I believe, took these photos. These photos are all from 1975. So this is when Elvis was actually living in the mansion, and it was a living, breathing operation at the time with everything going on. Everybody was doing their work there and living there and, and all that stuff. Um, something else I wanted to kind of go over, too, is I have a little piece of... Um, I don't know if you would call it Elvis memorabilia. It's kind of, uh, well, I'll tell you what it is and then you can decide what it is. But a lot of people don't realize that in Meditation Garden, I just happened to flip to this page, um, where Elvis is buried now with several members of his family, of course, is that the, 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 the tile out there used to be, well, there used to be red tile out there. And um, when Graceland was going to be open to the public, the insurance company said we can't we can't have it like that because it, when it rains, it gets slippery and people will be falling and, and lawsuits and stuff. And so they had to actually demolish all that, pull all the red tile out of there. So I'm going to show you a picture of Linda out there, and you can see the red tile there. And then I'm going to show you a picture of the demo. This was a picture of a slide that I took. And um, so the, the, the area was demoed, all the tile was removed, and it's concrete now the way we all know it today. But in Elvis's day, it did not look like it does now. So what I have here is one of the pieces of tile from the meditation garden that was taken out during the demo. Interesting, maybe, maybe not. Somebody will probably think it's cool, somebody will think it's weird, and that's okay, both of them, that's okay. So anyway, um, so those are some of the books I wanted to talk about or, or kind of um, show you. <laughs> I have another stack here that I want to go over just really quickly. These are books that were about Elvis's time at Graceland. This is the man, Elvis the man in my backyard. This was a fan that lived on the street directly behind Graceland, all the way at the back of the property. So that if they looked over the wall, they would look right into his yard. Good book fan's perspective. Another one, Elvis, as we knew him, our life shared in a small town in South Memphis. Jennifer Harrison. Again, these are all books that are written about Elvis's time at Graceland. Um, uh, as told by Elvis, Linda, and Me by Jeannie LeMay. Graceland, Coming Home with Elvis. This book I've never seen except this one that I bought, and I've read it most of the way through. 
um, I took it on an airplane trip and uh, read a good majority of it and learned a lot that I was not familiar with. Really good one there. And then the last one in this pile is uh, Taking Care of Business or Taking Care of Elvis by uh, Tish Henley, his nurse. Um, she is very active on Facebook and um, she's got a, I think it's a reprinting or a repressing of that book, maybe edited or a whole other book that just came out. Um, so check that out. But anyway, let's get on to uh, the main topic here. So I have one last book that kind of should go into that pile, but it's kind of more up to here. And this one is a hard, hard, hard book to get. It's just a little thin paperback. It take, took me about an hour and a half to read it. It's called I Got You, Elvis, I Got You. And what this is, is it's written by fans. Um, Be uh, Betty Page is the author, it says here. These were fans locally in Memphis that basically chased Elvis around everywhere he went. And reading this book, I actually felt really bad for him. And this book actually made me kind of feel a little bit bad for being the fan that I am. I know that's kind of weird to explain. It's hard to understand if you haven't read this book, but they basically stalked the man. They had um, codes for everything. If he was going to one movie theater, they would say, you know, he's going to whatever. Um, he would go to play racquetball, and they would chase him to the racquetball courts of the universities, and they would stare through all the windows. And there's one point in the book where there's a small, very, very small hallway that was not open to view. So they would look through the windows, little slats in the windows and look in and watch everything. And there was one very, very small hallway that was not visible through the, the window. And he would have to go sit in that hallway just to have some, some, some form of privacy. And it actually made me feel really bad for him. Um, they would blow red lights, chasing him all over the city. And so a good book to read, but it's a little sad and frustrating too at the same time to see what, what people did to him to the degree that they did to it, did it to him. So, so that one, I got you, Elvis, I got you. Look for that one if you're interested in books like what we're talking about today. A little bit of a disturbing book, but still um, a good one. So everybody always wants to get into Graceland, right? That's the goal. Here's a picture I took I want to show you. I'll show you a closer view of it here. Look at that. I could have gotten right up to his bedroom window, but um, uh, I didn't. Uh, they were painting the windowsills that day that I was at Graceland, so I took that photo. I thought it was pretty cool to see the ladder going right up to his bedroom window. Um, so let's talk about Harold Lloyd's book first. So this was, um, Harold Lloyd was a, um, a relative of Elvis, and, um, and uh, <laughs> this book, it, it could have used a little bit of editing. Um, it's, it's written in a very southern style, I'll just say that. Um, this copy is a first pressing. It says right on the inside, first pressing, November 1978. It is signed by Harold. And um, it has some great photos in it. It's not worth showing in the video because you won't be able to see them. But it, it has some great photos in it. But unfortunately, they're, they're small and black and white. But it's really cool. There's a lot of photos I have seen in here that I haven't seen elsewhere. Um, the Graceland Gates. This book was also reprinted with a pink hardcover. And um, just has a single picture of Elvis on it. It was a picture of Elvis with Muhammad Ali, and they trimmed out Muhammad Ali. It's just Elvis, but same exact book, word for word, just a different cover. But the, the thing about this book is just to read from the perspective of a security guard, Harold, and to talk about, for, to listen to him talk about the nightly adventures that he had to deal with at Graceland. Now, for all of those that you have been there, you know that the wall right by the security guard shack is very low. It's only about five feet, maybe four and a half feet tall. It gets higher down Elvis Presley Boulevard, but by the gate, it's pretty low. They, on a nightly basis, would have to deal with people literally jumping the wall and running up to the house, people jumping into the swimming pool. If the gates were open even for a second, cars would pull in and drive right up the driveway. Um, there's no plumbing in the guard shack. And so uh, some of the times, and it's in the book, you can read it. I'm not making this up. The guards would go around the back of the guard shack and just take a leak in the yard. <laughs> so, But there's a story in the book that Harold talks about where one of the guards was doing that very thing and came back around the guard shack and there was Elvis sitting there on a motorcycle staring at him with a very knowing look on his face. And the guy was mortified, but Elvis didn't say a word about it, but he knew what was that, what was going on. It, w it would have cost too much money to run plumbing all the way down there. That's why the thing has no bathroom in it. It never has had a bathroom in it. Um, let's see. I made a little bit of notes to kind of keep me on track. So um, oh, people would run into the gate all the time. So I actually saw 
uh, one time I went there on a tour and there was a big uh, wrinkle in one of the iron beams on there. And it, it, the next time I went, it was repaired. So I know that the gate has been hit several times. Uh, and the, and Harold actually talks about it in the book quite a, quite a bit. People would show up saying that they were there to marry Elvis and that he had called them and said to come to there, come to Graceland. I, just on a nightly basis, the stuff that they had to deal with, he talks about a, um, uh, a Japanese soldier from the World War II era that showed up in a full uniform and wanted to give, I think, a sword to Elvis. I mean, it just uh, the, the things that they had to deal with every night is just amazing. So basically, that's what I want to talk about. Sorry, I had to check my notes real quick. I just don't want to forget anything. There's so much to talk about. So the next one is the Hurry Home Elvis, and I kind of did, kind of went over this a little bit in detail in my last video, but I'll talk a little bit about this. So this book is so excellent. I cannot recommend this enough. Donna Lewis's Diaries, Hurry Home Elvis. If you just go to YouTube or eBay, not YouTube, eBay, 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 type in Donna Lewis Elvis, and it will come up. You will see this book. There are three of them. This is the main one that you want to get. You should get all three, but you should definitely get this one. In October, I believe it was October 1976, uh, yeah, October 29th, 1976, she was inside Graceland when Elvis was recording. She talks about that. Um, but just her perspective of what it was like um, um, being around Graceland on a day-to-day -day basis. Her father worked with Harold at the gates of Graceland as a security guard, but her dad also worked up at the, at the actual house, not just the guard shack. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but they would do rounds around the property. They'd walk all around the property at all hours of the day and the night. They weren't just watching the front gate. You know, the fans are smarter than that. They'll go through the woods and jump the gate or jump the fence. So they had security all around the property. It wasn't just the gates. And um, um, in in the book, uh, Donna talks about uh, um, Vernon sending people from the Dolan house through the back pasture to see if security would catch them to see if they were sleeping or not. And uh, her father was one that monitored the home, and so he would catch these guys coming through the pasture. And then it was just basically a setup by Vernon, just making sure the security was worth having. So anyway, I cannot recommend this book high, highly enough, Donna Lewis's book, and, and, and Harold's book too, as well. This is a great book. It's really thin. It, it'll just take you a couple of hours to read it, but there's so many really fascinating stories in it. You know, I, I, I wasn't going to talk about this, but there's, there's um, I will now, there's, uh, in Harold's book, he talks about shooting at cars driving up the driveway, shooting their tires out. Now that doesn't, it seems a little far-fetched in today's world, but think about this in the 60s and the 70s, and uh, in the deep mid-south, and things were a lot different in that world than they are now. And he talks about people rushing through the gate and driving up the driveway and they're firing at them to blow their tires out that seems so unbelievable to this day but i honestly i don't even believe there's any embellishment there i would completely i would completely believe that that would happen so i would say grab the book and read it for yourself and make your own uh, assessment this last one that i wanted to talk about is probably in my top five books about elvis ever and I have a bunch of books. I probably have 200 books on Elvis at least. And this is just a small, thin paperback. All the photos in it are, are black and white. Um, again, the same thing with the other books, or, or book, because um, the Hurry Home Elvis book has no photos. The, Gate, the Graceland Gates book has several photos, but all black and white and um, kind of awful quality. The same thing goes for Inside Graceland. There are pictures in here I've never seen anywhere else except in this book. But I just have to tell you, it says, Inside Graceland, Elvis has made remembers. Nancy Rooks. She um, was working for a temp service, and, <laughs> and she got a call. Hey, um, you, you need to go up to uh, Elvis's house. You've been hired as a temp, uh, through the temp service to go to Elvis's house. She said, well, Elvis who? It never even occurred to her that it was Elvis Presley. And they had to tell her, Elvis Presley. She was nervous. Um, it's not that she was a fan, it's just it's it's a big deal. And um but she didn't even think of Elvis Presley when they said you're going to Elvis's house. She's asked Elvis who. Um this book it, again is so it's thin, it'll take you just a couple of hours to read it. It is so good. Um she talks about so many different things about it, it doesn't talk about any of the drama 
Uh, there's only one part in the whole book that there's drama. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But it's just about the day-to-day -day running of Graceland. She, th there's a lot of mentions of Aunt Delta because she kind of ran the house. A lot of people don't know that. Um, she didn't just mooch off Elvis and live there for free. She basically took on the task of keeping all the cars in order, watching where all the keys are for everything, and instructing the, the electrician and the gardeners. And uh, She basically ran the house. A lot of people don't realize that. She gets a bad rap because she was a bad alcoholic and she had an angry temper. And um, and she was just a violent kind of person. Um, um, I actually had a run-in with her. Me, not me, but I, indirectly me. I was at Graceland in 1993, and I was standing on the front porch about to take the tour, and somebody in the party, not affiliated with me, but they were on the tour group with me, reaches over and pushes the button on the doorbell on the front of the Graceland Mansion, on the front door. And back then, the doorbell was hooked up. So when you walk into the kitchen, if you look to your right, there's a humongous doorbell hanging there. And when this guy rang, and this person, I don't know if it was a guy or not, this person rang the doorbell in the kitchen, that doorbell, bang, 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 you could hear it everywhere. She came running out of the house onto the front porch and said, what the hell is going on, in, going on out here? Who the hell's ringing the doorbell? Don't you know people live here? And she slammed the door and ran back in. And everybody on the group, to her laughed. It was kind of an awkward moment just for a second. Then they laughed. They thought it was a plant, like it was a setup. It was absolutely 100% not a setup. It was real. Later in the tour, when we went to the back through the back of the house and went out the back door of the jungle room, she was sitting out in her wheelchair with her dog Edmund, her little Pomeranian, um, Edmund the third or fourth or fifth, whatever it was. And she was sitting there in a wheelchair with oxygen on, smoking, holding the dog. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this, there could be an explosion at any moment. But anyway, she actually ran the house for the most part. She took care of all the vehicles, made sure everything um, was in order. There's a there's a parrot closet at Graceland is what they call it. There was, used to be a bird in there, a parrot. So if you go in the main front door of Graceland, you got the stairs here and you walk straight and then Vernon and Gladys' bedroom was there. There's a door there straight ahead of you. If you open up that door, there's kind of a little closet in there, but if you go through that door and open another door, you're out in the backyard. So that little closet area there was where the bird was. And um, there was a there's a, a, a cork board on that wall with all the keys for all the vehicles, and she would take care of that. So she actually did a lot around the house, and, and everything I'm telling you is in this book. Nancy Rooks talks about all of it. They would change Elvis's sheets every single day. They would clean the house every single day. Um, if Elvis, this is an interesting story, and again, it's in the book. Elvis hated seafood. Hated, hated, hated seafood. Did not like it at all. Hated the smell of it. Didn't want to eat it. Didn't like the taste of it. Well, all the maids love catfish. They're all from Memphis. They love catfish. It's a very southern meal. They love it, love it, love it. Well, when they would work at Graceland, even when Elvis wasn't there, they would be there maintaining the house, and they would have to work. They would cook catfish at Graceland, but they had a rule that if Elvis was due back, they would not cook catfish within three days of his arrival so he wouldn't smell it. <laughs> I don't think that's a rule Elvis made up. I think they made that rule on their own. So they would cook catfish at the house all the time when he wasn't there. But within three days of his returning, they would not cook the catfish at the house. One of the funniest stories, and it is laugh out loud funny, that is in this book. If you know anything about the Graceland property, Elvis... Uh, I'm sorry, Vernon's house was at Dolan Street, which is the next street over, but the properties share a fence. So the backyard of the Dolan house and the backyard, the back pasture of Graceland just are separated by a fence. It's back by the horse barn, if you're not familiar with where it's at. So the staff would go from Graceland and they would go out and they would go through the pasture to the back of Dolan instead of going out the front, down Elvis Crescent Boulevard, up Dolan into the house. They would just exit the mansion and go through the pasture through a doorway that at the time was in the fence and into the back yard at Dolan so they could come and go. And a lot of times they would drive golf carts or whatever. But in the book, Nancy says she's in the kitchen. And if you're in the kitchen at Graceland, you can see through that main window there that used to be the back of the house. You can see through the jungle room, the four or five windows there, you can see out into the backyard. Okay, She's in the kitchen and she sees one of the maids leaves the back of the house and she's going through the pasture to go to the Dolan Street house, and one of the horses out there charges her. And she starts running from the horse, 
and she slips in a mud puddle and falls in the mud puddle. She's just covered in mud, and her wig pops off her head. And the horse wasn't trying to attack her. The horse was probably just seeing what was up or just wanted to play or who knows what it was. But the, the horse wasn't being violent. She talks about it in the book. But the mental image of this lady running through the pasture, falling in a mud puddle, her wig comes off. I literally laughed out loud reading that story. It is all in here. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let me just, just got to, hold on a minute. I got to check my cheat sheet here. Hang on a second here. <laughs> Okay, so two more stories about this book, and then we're going to wrap up this video. So I told you there was one thing of drama. You know, uh, we all know what happened to Elvis, how he passed away, his health decline in, in the later years of his life and all that. But this book doesn't have anything to do with the divorce from Priscilla, the, the Elvis's health issues, none of that. There's none of that in here. It's just about the day-to-day -day dealings of Graceland itself. The one thing, the one story she talks about in here that, that is kind of a little cringeworthy, but it's also kind of funny, is Elvis had a camera in his room that he could look down and see the different parts. Uh, or he didn't have a camera in his room. He had, he had monitors in his room where he could see different parts of the property. He could see the living room. He could see the kitchen. He could see the front gate, whatever. So he had, a, he had a, a, a button in his bedroom, and he could press the button, and that told the maids that he was ready for a meal. So he's up in his room, and he's watching the monitor, and he's pressing the button. Hey, I'm ready for a meal. I'm ready for a meal. And the maids are down in the kitchen drinking coffee, just kind of standing around, lounging around, not doing a whole lot, just kind of waiting for Elvis to be ready for his meal. Well, they never hear anything. And he's up there panicking, or not panicking, but pressing the button and getting more and more frustrated and more frustrated. Finally, he snaps. He comes running down the stairs. He comes running down the back stairs. Um, so if you go the main staircase at Graceland, it goes down to a landing. There's a door there. If you open that door, it goes to another flight of stairs that comes down into the kitchen. He came down those stairs and ran in and said something to the effect of, again, it's in the book. I'm paraphrasing here. But he said, you know, I paid for all of you to be here. I only want you to do what I ask you to do. You know, it, it was very blunt and to the point. And he said, I'm up there. I'm asking you for my food and I don't get anything. What the hell is everybody even here for if I can't get what I want? Basically something like that. It turns out that he was upstairs pressing the wrong button. So they, they never heard anything. They weren't being lazy or not doing their job or anything. They didn't hear anything because he was pressing the wrong button. So anyway, that story, I don't know how well that translates on the video. It's in the book. It's kind of funny and also kind of cringeworthy at the same time. The last thing I want to talk about about this book is, like I said, it's with it's in the top five of my favorite Elvis books of all of them, is that she talks about August 16th, 1977. Um, she says that she heard a noise of what ended up being Elvis falling on the floor upstairs. She didn't think anything of it at the time. But she talks about uh, when the ambulance arrived to pick him up, the paramedics run in, they go up the stairs, and they brought him down on a gurney. And she said, in, it's all in the book, that she was standing in the dining room watching as they brought the gurney down the um, stairs. And she said, I looked at him and I knew he was gone. That's what it says in this book. And I'm here to tell you, it's heart-wrenching. It's, it's the most graphic description um, of his passing that I've read in any of these books that I have. And it's just so sad because she was literally standing right there. She was in the house when it happened. She was there when they brought him down. She said, I took one look at him and I knew he was gone. It, I had to stop reading the book. It, it's, it's, it's so sad to read that. And then she talks about the subsequent couple of years after that. And Graceland died that day. It, it literally died that day. Nothing was ever the same again. And um, she talks about Vernon's health declining and uh, Delta's health declining, and basically everybody that was in the house just starts dying off. Um, and it's just so sad, and she talks about how the, health, how the house was a living, breathing thing, and it was so alive with activity all the time, and then everybody just was gone, and it was just four walls basically now, and that everything that the house was at one point no longer, wa no longer was. It is such a sad description, but accurate at the same time of Elvis's passing and then his father and Delta and how the house went from so active and alive to just a shell. And now it's just a roadside America tourist trap. 
I'm go I'm so glad that Graceland's open for us to be able to preserve it and have it as Elvis fans, but it's nothing like it used to be. And in fact, I know several people that were in the inner circle and the, and I've toured Graceland with them and they've said the same thing. Yeah, it's it's nothing like it used to be. It's just it's just a house now, you know, that kind of thing, or it's just a museum now. It's nothing like it was during Elvis's day. That's what they all say. I of course wasn't there, I don't know, but I can absolutely see where they're coming from. So, in closing, the gates of Graceland, security of Graceland, and the adventures that they had to go through on a daily and nightly basis, highly, highly recommended. Um, uh, Harold Lloyd, his son Roger's on Facebook. Check him out. Roger's awesome. He's a lot of fun. Gets kicked off Facebook all the time. <laughs> I love it. Facebook jail for Roger. Uh, great book to pick up. Look for this one. It's not hard to find. Um, it's usually kind of cheap. You can probably find it on eBay. Hurry Home Elvis by uh, Donna Lewis. Donna Lewis Elvis on eBay. This will pop right up. It is worth every penny. Look how thick this thing is, too. She kept a diary. Everything that she saw, she wrote down. This thing is awesome. Get you one of those. And then if you don't get anything else, I would highly recommend Inside Graceland. Elvis has made remembers Nancy Rooks. I met Nancy a few times. I wasn't a friend of hers, but I met her. Gracious, wonderful woman. She sadly passed away now. But she left this for us, and I'm so thankful for that. Nancy, thank you. She, This book is really, really fantastic, well worth a read. So I hope you enjoyed the, the video today. I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, we're going to have the return of Eddie. Nobody likes Eddie because he's a freaking hound dog, right? So anyway, I hope you like the video. Like, share, subscribe. And if you don't, it's because you ain't nothing but a hound dog. We'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it.